Welcome back to the channel and in this tutorial we're going to be doing a quick and dirty cloth simulation in Blender. We're going to be using Adobe Mixamo to get our rigged character with motion capture data. So that's going to speed up the time a little bit and it's also a free resource. Now I'm going to be going over that briefly in this tutorial. So how to get that character into Blender. But I do have that covered in a bit more detail in some videos that I'll link in the description below so you can check that out. So you can see this is the actual scene here, which I will be putting on Patreon, but it's just a bunch of messy pictures on here. And I just did a quick dirty job and it doesn't look that great up close, but with a little bit of motion blur and some camera stuff, it actually looked pretty good as a final result. And it's just to have a little bit of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll try and put some timestamps in here as well to simplify the process for you a little bit. I appreciate your time and let's get started. If you don't already have an Adobe Mixamo account, it's free to create one. You're gonna go ahead and sign in once you have, and you can come up here to the search bar under the characters. So just click on characters and in the search bar, you can type in M A N N, hit enter. And you should see the first result here is going to be the mannequin. So you can just click on that. And depending on whether you've used it before or not, you might have this box that pops up. So I'm just going to go use this character. And over here on the side, there's going to be a setup where you can see how your animation works and how everything looks in the 3D space. So what you can do is you're going to go on find animation. You can also just come here and click on animations and then type in here in the search bar what you're looking for. So in this case, I'm going to go with backflip. So I'm going to type in backflip hit enter. I'm going to go with the second result over here. And once you click on an animation, it's going to load it in here into this 3D scene and you can see what it all looks like. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to download, change the frames per second to 24. That's what Blender works on at default. If you do go with the other options, make sure to change it in Blender so you don't have any scaling issues. The format should be FBX. And we're not going to touch any of these settings. Go ahead and download. Once your download is complete, you're going to open up Blender. I'm using Blender 3.0 and you're going to go to File, go down to Import, and then we're going to go down to FBX and select that format. And then you're going to find wherever that is on your computers. In my case, it downloaded to my desktop. I'm going to select the backflip.fbx and go Import FBX. And now you can see it's imported into the scene. Now, while that is all still active, you can see it's quite small. So come up here to your pivot transform, change it to 3D cursor. So now our 3D cursor that's in the middle of our world space here will be our reference point. And we're just gonna hit S on the keyboard and scale it up about this big. Once you're done with that, click on your character mesh and then go Control A or Command A and apply the scale. Because we're gonna be working with cloth, it's important that the scale is applied. We don't need the default cube, so you can go ahead and click on it, hit X and delete. And because we wanna start in a T pose, we're gonna select our rig. We're gonna come over here to our timeline and just drag it up. Roll your middle mouse button over the timeline to zoom in and you can hold in the middle mouse button to move to the side. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click and drag to select all of these keyframes. G to move them up to about frame 15. You're gonna come up to object, change it to pose mode. Make sure that all of the bones are active. Then you're gonna go Alt G, Alt R and Alt S to make sure any transforms are reset on frame one. And then to keep them, you're gonna add in a keyframe. So you're gonna go I and insert a location and rotation keyframe. Select that keyframe that you now created. Shift D to duplicate it and drag it to frame 10. So you should now have this, as you can see. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And then come to your end frame value here and just change it to 110 frames. And then once you've done that, you can also come here to transform, set that back to median point, and let's go back to object mode. Okay, so we're back in object mode. And before we get into any sort of cloth stuff, it can be quite processor intensive. So we wanna make things a little bit more efficient. So let's select the mesh, which by the way, has quite a lot of topology to it. So we're gonna go over to our modifiers with that active mesh, and we're gonna come here to add modifier and let's give that a decimate modifier. And let's click on unsubdivide and bump that up to one iteration, click on it and drag it above the armature. So now it's decimated that topology and it's gonna have a little bit less lag to it. The more lag you have, the more you can bump that number up, but you're gonna start getting um, some messy faces. So just keep that in mind, but I'm gonna leave mine at one iteration. So holding in shift and left arrow button, we're gonna go back to frame one. And on frame one of this mesh active, we're gonna tab into edit mode, um, hit Z, go into wireframe and deselect everything. So Alt A and deselect everything. And then you're just gonna click and drag and you're gonna select all of the geometry that I'm selecting here. So just these bits here, like that. It doesn't have to be symmetrical on both sides, but what you do wanna do is come in here to the neck area and just make sure that all of these verts here are deselected. So we only want everything going up to where the neck is here. If your selection isn't all perfect like this around the neck, don't worry about it. It is gonna be pretty rough, but just make sure you have this part of the body roughly selected. Shift D to duplicate, right click to let go. Then press Alt S to scale out along the normals. 
And then what you can do is you can hit P and you can go separate selection. Tab back out. Now select the new object. With it active, just hit F3 and then you're gonna type in set origin and you're gonna go origin to geometry. So now the origin point is in the middle there. You're also gonna to come to your materials and you're just gonna get rid of the material that it shares with the character. Let's click on new and let's just call this cloth to create a new material. In the viewport, I'm just gonna go down and give that a viewport display color. Bring up the roughness a bit. It could be anything. You're not gonna be seeing it in the render. It's just for the viewport display. And then we're gonna go into edit mode and just do a few things. So to make things look a little bit cooler, go to your edge select, shift alt, click on an edge over here to loop select it. Then you can type in F3 and just type in checker and click on checker deselect. So now it's selected every other edge. And in your front view, you can go E to extrude, S to scale a bit, and then E to extrude, and then shift R to repeat that action a few times like that. Now you can do the exact same thing on the other side. And then you can do the exact same thing here on the legs. Shift Alt. And you can do these at the same time. Click on edges down here just to select them. So I'm holding in Shift and Alt while I do this. And in your front view, you can go E to extrude. And then Shift R to repeat that action a few times. If it's intersecting the leg, just go to Vertex Select option and then go into Wireframe. Select the bottom verts on one side, enable proportional editing, and then you can just go G and just move them over a bit, S to scale, and just roughly place them outside of the character geometry. The same thing here for the other side. That's looking pretty awesome. So let's go up here, just fix this funny stuff going on here. So we're just gonna come in here, Shift Alt, click on the edge to loop selected, Control Plus to grow to selection, like that. And let's just go to our smooth tool and just smooth that area out and clean that up a bit. Okay, pretty cool. That's all we need to do for now. Let's tab out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to our modifiers and we're gonna come to the decimate for this one and just increase it. And then once we've done that, we're gonna come down here and just apply it. And let's also get rid of the armature. We don't need that for our clothing. So just get rid of it. Make sure the clothing is active. Go over to your physics tab and let's give that a cloth. And if we now go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we can see it's just gonna fall. So what we need to do is make sure to select the character mesh and just give it a collision. Now, if we hit space bar starting at frame one, we're gonna see that there is interaction and an animation should play out. Now it's gonna be really slow, but we're gonna bake it out in just a little bit. But you get the idea of how simple it was to create this pretty awesome effect. Now we'll get into a few more little details with the cloth settings, but first of all, let's just add a texture. So I'm gonna quickly show you how we can do that, doing a little bit of cheating. So you can go to the internet and find yourself some images that you can use for a texture. Now in this case, I'm using Pexels, which is a completely free site. I just went in and I typed in Monk and I went down and I just looked for something that had a lot of texture and quality. That doesn't really matter if it's lit or it has shadows, which is a quick and dirty kind of texture, but I really like this one over here. So find something that you want, click on it and download the image. And I will put a link in the description below to Pexels, but I've already done that. So let's get back into Blender. Once again, just making sure that your cloth is active. You can go to your materials tab. We already added a material, but if you go over to your surface, you can go over here to the base color, click on this tab and let's go give that an image texture. Click on open and then find whichever image you decided to download. So in my case, I went with this one here. I'm gonna click on open image. And if you hit Z and you go material preview, you're gonna see it's applied, but it's quite horrible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our UV editing workspace. Over here, hit one to go into your front or for graphic view. You're gonna select everything and you're gonna press U on your keyboard. And then you're gonna to go to project from view. And over here, you can scale it up and hit Z over here and just go material preview. So you can see what it looks like over here. Okay, so over here, move your topology around. So I'm gonna scale that. Doesn't matter if it's perfect, just trying to get something out of this real quick. And once you're done with that, you can select smaller parts. In this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select these arms on both sides, holding and shift, select the other side, control plus to grow to selection, just about that much should do, and then go U and project from view. Select this side over here, G to move it, place it on top of this one, and then grab both of them, scale them up, right to them. And these are just those decorative flares on the end. I'm just gonna place them right here where I see a little bit of detail. Z, material preview, just making sure that it all looks good. Okay, it looks fine. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the legs here. Make sure you're on frame one, hit the space bar and see what it's looking like so far. 
Okay, that looks pretty awesome. So if you want to make the quality of the cloth simulation a little bit better with the cloth active, just go to your physics settings under the cloth, go to the quality settings here, bump it up to about seven or so. Then you can scroll down to your collisions. And it's really important that you enable self collision down here. That just means the cloth will not only interact with the character mesh, but also itself and then bump up the quality steps. Keep in mind self collision is going to add more processing into the mix. So it's going to take a little bit more of your processing time. But we are going for quick and dirty here, so don't worry about setting the quality steps up too high. Um, but that's about all. So what we're going to do so it doesn't slow us down the whole time, we're going to actually bake this out. So let's scroll down here to our cache. Make sure your blend file is saved because this could like totally crash, especially in Blender. No offense. And then we're going to go over here to the end value and we're going to make that 110. And that's because it's the exact same end value we have here for our mocap animation. And then you can come down here and just click on bake. So once that's done, I'll come back and then I'll show you how we set up a little bit of a stage with some lighting and render this out as a pretty cool looking animation. And there we have it. That took about two minutes on my computer, but overall it's not too much processing even for a smaller computer. So let's go over to our modifiers real quick as well. Just give that a solidify just so it doesn't look like paper and it actually has a little bit of thickness to it. So to make this look really cool, our animation, we can add a bit of a stage. So I'm gonna quickly show you guys how we do that. So Shift A, add in a plane. It's to scale that guy up. With it active, tab into edit mode. Edge select works really good here. Just select that back edge. E to extrude and then Z to limit it to the Z. Select the edge here and just control B or command B on a Mac to bevel and roll the middle mouse button. So you guys have seen me do this like a million times. So just really simple stage. You can scale it a bit on the X. Back into object mode, right click and just shade smooth for that. So the camera um, is by default up here, but we can just select it. G to move it more to the front of our scene. At this point, you guys can really be as creative as you want with camera placement and stuff, but over in the camera settings, let's make the focal length for 95 and then just pull your camera out a little bit, rotate it. And if you want to be really cool, you can add some shake to your camera. So just come in here in your timeline, go to frame one and then hit I to insert a location rotation and then go about frame 50 or 37 in this case where he's up in the air, move it up a bit, hit I, insert a location and rotation. And then come to about here, we force back down. You guys kind of get the idea. Just roughly move the camera along with the character. But to make it look a little bit more dynamic, you can just select all of these keyframes. Go over here in the tab. Let's go into the graph editor real quick. And then come here to the drop down. Let's select the Z. And with the Z coordinate active, come over here and hit N to bring up the properties. Go to modifiers and let's give that a noise modifier. And let's make the scale 23 and the strength of it 0.2. And now on the Z, we're going to have a little bit of shake. So it looks a little bit more handheld, but you can also do the same thing on the X. So come to the X, select it, give it that a noise modifier. Let's set the scale to 15 and the strength to 0.1. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now it's got a little bit of dynamic movement to it and looks like it's actually a little bit more handheld. So I'm going to go back into the timeline here, drag that down and that's pretty much it. So let's add in some lights, starting with environment lighting. So go to your world settings. Under the color here, just make that sky texture and then come to the strength. Let's make that 0.2. Hit Z, go into rendered. And we are using EV over here. You can make it cycles. It's going to take a little bit longer, but I'm going to come here and enable ambient occlusion. And of course, screen space reflections is going to be really important. And we don't want to just be relying on the environment lighting. So let's go shift A. Let's add in a area light G to move it up, rotate it in. And let's give that a strength under the light settings of about 120 and increase the size of it. Let's go into our shading workspace. Make sure you're in your camera view, then hit Z, go rendered. Let's see what it looks like. I guess it's looking pretty cool. I prefer a darker background. So I'm going to select the plane in the background, click new, and I'm just going to go to the base color and make it darker. And I'm going to bring that roughness up a bit and select my light. And at this point, you can edit your light by moving it around a bit. Shift D to duplicate it. And this is completely up to you. I'm not going to be doing a lighting tutorial at this point. Uh, you guys can totally figure this out on your own or watch some of my other tutorials. Um, I sometimes like adding a little bit of color variation to my lighting. Really just depends on the mood you're trying to create here, but you know, don't overdo it. We're just having fun here with this sort of cloth sim stuff. Then you can select the cloth itself and you can come here to the material. And if you want to add a little bit of extra detail, just select this texture, drag it over, shift A, click on the search and let's get a color ramp node. I'm going to use that color ramp node to convert this into grayscale. So take the color 
from your texture, plug it into the factor, shift A, search, and let's get a bump node. You guys have seen me use that in some of my other tutorials. So just grab the bump node, plug the color into the height, and then this normal here can now drive our bump a little bit. So we're gonna plug that into the normals of our principled, and the strength is way too high, so I'm just gonna go with 0.3. And now we have that little bit of fake detail there. If you look up close, it looks absolutely atrocious. But from the distance with a little bit of motion blur, this may actually look pretty cool. So let's go back into our layout, go back into our camera view, hit Z, go rendered. If it's not already, let's go to our render settings, go down and enable motion blur. And I think I might go to my world and just bump the strength down just a bit to about 0.1 maybe. Now let's just get a shot that looks really cool. So I'm going to go with that. That looks pretty cool. So let's give that a test render, go render, render image. And there you have it. So um, once you render this out as an animation, it'd probably look a lot cooler. You can spend as much time as you want refining it, uh, working with the materials, the lighting setup, whatever you want to do. I think actually deleting one light on the side gives it a little bit more contrast. Um, but yeah, this, like I said, this is not a materials or a lighting tutorial. This is just having a little bit of fun and, and just enjoying ourselves. I hope you guys have actually liked this tutorial. Um, oh yeah, by the way, I'll quickly show you how you render this out as an animation. You're going to go to your output, Go over to the output folder here, you know, select it somewhere in your computer, set the file format to an FFmpeg video. Under the encoding, you can change the container to an MP4. Make sure to save and then it's just render, render animation, and it'll render it out to your selected output destination. I will be putting these files on my Patreon. You can check that in the description. You can also check out my link to Skillshare where you can try it for free for one month using my link. And I've got a lot of cool content on there that'll teach you a lot of really cool stuff about Blender, sculpting, character stuff, animation, it's all on there. So feel free to give it a shot. And I really appreciate that you guys took the time to watch my tutorial.